Talent Show, I'm at the Wings Parade, where the newly qualified pilots get given their wings. And Callum has gone to meet one of our oldest veterans, who played a key role in one of the major battles of World War II. Let's find out about their stories in the second edition of Young Eagles. This is the Army Air Corps Wings Parade, which takes place at the Museum of Army Flying. Here, the newly qualified pilots are presented with their wings to show that they have completed their pilot's training. Lieutenant Hannah Gold is being presented with her wings today, and I met up with her before the ceremony started. So Hannah, how are you feeling today? I am really nervous. It's been a long old course, but um, this is the, the culmination of it all, but I'm really looking forward to it. So how was training? Was it tough? Did you ever have a point where you think, oh, can I just give up now? Or... I never felt like I wanted to give up, yeah. but um, I did struggle with it a couple of times, but the instructors are really good and they sort of help you through it all the way. And uh, getting down to middle wallop for the last bit, getting back to the army was wonderful and it's just been really, really fun. So where did you get that medal from? I went to Iraq in 2004, uh, at the end of Optelic 4, moving into Optelic 5 with 652 Squadron, one regiment which is out in Germany, in Gütersloh. So do you actually feel proud that you've achieved this march and you're actually going, what are your hopes for the future as well? I'm immensely proud actually. I joined the army as a soldier um, and eventually went through Sandhurst and onto the pilot's corps. So I sort of, the, the road has been quite tough and, and really long. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really proud uh, that I've got this far. And I'm actually going on to fly the Gazelle, which is the, the sort of the really small helicopter uh, out in Northern Ireland. But I can't wait and it's going to be brilliant. And hopefully at some point fly the Apache, but don't quote me on that one. <laughs> So do you hope to fly anything other than the Gavels and Apache? And are you hoping to do air shows or just fighting with the Gavels? I think everybody would like to be part of the Blue Eagles display team. I think that would be awesome. But in the Lynx rather than the Apache because they do cooler stuff. So who have you got with you today and how are they feeling as well? I've got loads of people. Um, all of my family. I've got loads of friends from Sandhurst. I've got a couple of friends from, uh, from a previous life, if you like, before mm -hmm. the army. And as far as I can tell, they're all looking forward to it as well and quite excited. So what did you do before you were in the army? Oh, goodness. Um, it's not particularly exciting, really. <laughs> I went to school and did my GCSEs and then moved up to Milton Keynes to go to college. I worked in McDonald's, but everyone's got to get a job. Um, at the end of college, I decided I wanted to be in the army, so I joined the Air Corps from there when I was 17. Was being in the army always like, a dream of your childhood, or was it just a spur-of-the-moment thing? Um, I've got a, a family background of firefighting, so we've got a sort of quite a um, athletic, uh, sort of outdoorsy type family anyway. So I was always up for going out and getting dirty and what have you. So the army was almost a natural choice. Uh, although flying was something I wanted to do, it sort of came in a bit later. Um, but it, it's awesome. Lieutenant Gold is one of the Army Air Corps' youngest pilots, but Callum has been to meet one of our oldest veterans. In September 1944, the Allied Army launched a major airborne assault on a small town in Holland called Arnhem. The glider pilots played a key role in this mission and I have come to meet Staff Sergeant Arthur Shackleton who flew one of the first gliders into Arnhem. And we are looking at some old film to see if we can see him. Do you know which one of these planes was yours? <clears throat> they, they were the gliders, they were, they were horses. All lined up, ready for takeoff. Would you have been among the crowd of these? Not, no, not these. No, these, these were the troops we carried. And when they came, we'd been there about an hour and a half, checking the gliders, make sure that all the controls were okay and that they were fit to fly. We were round the back here having a crafty smoke mm -hmm. when they came. You see, yeah. and then they're all chatting before they get on board. We knew our destination was a town in. Holland called Arnhem. We'd never heard of it before, but it was 60 miles behind the enemy lines. That was a bit daunting. So were you but nervous at all going into... No. You wasn't? No, and I've spoken to people since then and nobody was nervous. We were all, we were young men, you see, we were all in our 20s. So um, you were all excited? When you're 20, yes, journey. yes. This would end the war before Christmas, you see, a big knockout blow to the Germans. 
And, uh, Is any of these gliders you taking off? I'll, I'll have a look. I'll two two six two nine one or two six one. I'll show you. When when we were sat there nine we one. are. Yeah, there we are. That's that's, that's that's me taking off. Yeah, yeah. And that's the album all that's doing us. This must have been quite an exciting experience. Oh, it was. Runway. Yeah. Well, uh, we were sat in the glider. It was my job to check all our load, which was a, a colonel, a regiment sergeant major, a batman, signaller. That's a humble car glider. He'll have a tank on board. It looks quite heavy. And it was heavy. Yes. Yes. And we were sat in the front, like he was, I was this side, and I saw this man with a tripod and two big hands, and he was turning a handle. And I said to my Major Tola, smile, because the man's taking a photograph of it. Do you know what top speed these gliders could actually get up to? 160 was the top. 160? Because they were made of wood, you see, yeah. It's quite a high speed for these Oh, guys. yeah. Now we're over there now. So it looked like the front... The front plane would be in the best position. Oh, we were, yes, yeah. It doesn't look like there's a particular landing strip. No, it's a field, you see. It's a it's an area. Oh. Land it's a landing zone. And sometimes you you picked your spot to land, and you're coming in, and someone came underneath you and landed on your spot. So you had to pull your stick back and try and not stall it and go over the top of them, mm -hmm. and plump down in front or try and get on the side. An airborne division was 10,000 troops. 5,000, say, were paratroopers that jumped in parachutes, and 5,000 were gliders. We carried the jeeps and the trailers and the anti-tank guns for the paratroopers, mm -hmm. and also supplied air landing troops, to, so you had half and half. But paratroopers didn't like riding in gliders, they were frightened. They thought they were going to crash all the time. <laughs> and we didn't like jumping by parachute. Yeah. <laughs> well, Arthur has some great stories to tell us, and I think we'll have to come back and see him again. But it's time to go back and join Izzy at the Wings Parade. Thank you, Callum. Lieutenant Gold is about to be presented with her wings. Lieutenant Hannah Gold, Army Air Corps, posted to 5 Regiment Army Air Corps based in Order Grove, Northern Ireland. <laughs> with Lieutenant Gold in a later show, but for now, our newly qualified pilots march off to the applause of their friends and families, continuing the long and proud history of soldiers in the air. Coming up soon on Young Eagles, Emily goes firefighting, Callum gets rescued from a crash-linked helicopter, and Eugene meets one of Britain's great inventors. <laughs> 